Hi, this is David, and thanks for checking out my video. So what I thought we'd work on right now is working on an image where we're going to drop in another image over the top of this one. I have a gentleman I uh, shot in the studio, and we shot him specifically for this. Uh, I did put him against a, a solid background, which will make it easy to separate. And what I'm going to do is come up here and grab the quick selection tool, which is sometimes under the magic wand. I'm going to click on that and basically just start uh, bringing his image, uh, separating it from the background. So we're going to basically just come in here and grab as much as we can. It should be a pretty easy one to get uh, just because uh, the, the contrast is really good against the gray background. Uh, we want to make sure we get all of his hair. Catch his ear. Just sort of checking all along here and make sure we get his knuckles. And because of the background we're going on to, it's, uh, it's definitely a contrasty background, so we're not going to have too much of a problem hiding any little flaws. So I won't have to spend a lot of time on this image, uh, which is kind of nice. So I'm just going to kind of make sure we got all the little pieces. Now here we're missing some, so I'm going to come in here and grab all this. Looks like we got a little too much there. I'm going to kind of pull this back in and just double check it here. And that's looking pretty good. Make sure around his head that we got it and around his jacket. Uh, here we're missing a little piece. Because of the highlight, uh, we kind of lost a little bit there, so we're getting that back. Okay. Now that's looking pretty good. So what I'm going to do is just go ahead and grab this. I'm going to bring this to a uh, background to itself. So I'm going to do a Command J to copy what we just selected. So now we can turn the, the other one off and see the image and make sure that we have everything we need. Uh, if we want to, we can drop in another, uh, just drop in a basically a blank uh, layer. And we can come up here, edit, and put a color into it. So if we want to see it against some something else other than, you know, pick a color that will it'll, we'll make it stand out to see if there's any problems, we can do that. And then basically you can see if there, any mistakes were made. And that's looking pretty good. I'm okay with that. Um, so what we're going to do is basically take this image and move it to the other image. So we're going to just basically grab it, drag it up while holding it down, keep holding it down, and then just drop it on out here. So now we have our new image on top of the old image. So we can move it around and place it where we want it. I kind of wanted him in the center. I want to be able to see this area and this window a little bit just because we have the light hitting him on the side of the face. So what we're going to do is basically just center him over that area. I do want this to be more of a head and shoulder shot on this one. So I'm going to actually enlarge him just a little bit because uh, I want it to be uh, just basically a, a b big portion of it other than having, you know, the other, uh, you know, being a full body shot. It's definitely easier uh, where, where you don't have to put the people standing on the ground because uh, sometimes standing on the ground, then you have to create shadows, which isn't a big deal, but it is something that takes a little more time. So basically, this is the image we're going to work with now. And what we want to do is create some other effects. So when I developed these images in Photoshop or process bringing them into Photoshop, I did make sure that the colors were going to be fairly consistent between the two. I had earth tones and warmer to tones in this image, uh, in the background image. So I also brought the warmer tones in the in the model also. So I did want those to look fairly consistent. Um, you can definitely tell it's been cut out at this point. But when we start making the changes to it from now on, we will sort of change the feel of it and merge it together and almost meld the images together where it seems to work a lot better. So to do this effect, what we're going to do is we're going to need to flatten the image. And then we're going to come up here to Image and Adjustments and come down to HDR Toning. And what this does is this kind of gives us a lot of options as far as changing um, just about anything in this image to sort of create the, the look we're, we're looking for. So we're just going to kind of play with these until we can kind of get that feel. I'm looking for um, a little sharper feel to it. Uh, 
I definitely want it to feel a little sharper and grittier. Uh, I, I definitely want that gritty feel. So we're going to just make some adjustments going along here. And there's no right or wrong on any of the, this part of it. It's just picking what works for you and what you're sort of looking to do with the image. And um, I am going to be pulling some of the 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 color out of this in a few minutes. I do want to drop it back, um, not to a black and white, but just remove some of the color out of it. So I will be doing that in a few minutes. So I'm just going to make some adjustments in here until I kind of get what I was looking for for the image. And I'm watching the highlights right now in the window and I kind of do want those to kind of blow out a little bit. I'm dropping the vibrance down because I will be dropping some of the color out of here again. So we're going to kind of bring some of those down a little bit in this in this area. And I'm going to click OK. So I'm kind of liking the sort of like the feel of that so far. So at this point, what we're going to do is is I'd like to get his face more into shadow and just add a little more contrast back in the image. So I'm going to just come down here to the the uh, the adjustment layers, which is a little yin yang symbol down here. I like working in adjustment layers because that allows me to make adjustments and edit them anywhere along the way. So we can, we're just going to go to the levels and we're going to add a little black, uh, just sort of darken the blacks up a little more. And then also bring the grays in a little bit, kind of mid-tones and bring those down a little bit too. Um, his jacket's getting a little darker than I'm comfortable with. So what I want to do is paint on the mask on his jacket in black uh, to cover up the effect we just added. So I'm going to go to the brush. I'm going to toggle back to the black, so the black is in the foreground color. So to toggle, you use the, the X key, which brings the black forward. Get a little larger brush, and I'm just going to uh, paint in here with 100% opacity just to allow that black, because I don't want to lose the jacket completely or any of the, the colors on the front. So Because we're going to actually lose some of that in a few minutes again. So I definitely want to keep the tones in there at this point. Um, I do want to get rid of some of the some of the color in here. I don't want to see as much color. I want to take it not to a black and white, but a little closer. So I'm going to go back to the levels again and go to hue saturation. And we're going to just dial the saturation down some. And what's really nice about this is if we can take it down in here, you know, and basically take it, it's still a little bit of a color in there. But what's nice about dealing with the, uh, uh, with the, uh, adjustment layers is you can come in here now and since you've taken it past where you want to go you can dial that back by coming up to the opacity so the hue saturation is what we just did so I'm going to grab the op opacity and just start dialing that back a little bit and what that's doing is adding some of the color back in so it's reducing the effect that I just put on this image uh, so that's kind of what I was looking for I was looking for not quite a black and white but I kind of wanted to go that direction now, what I'd like to do is add a little more darkness to his face. So what we're going to do is basically go to brightness and contrast, another adjustment layer, uh, because we can fully edit that too. And I'm just going to darken it up a little bit more, add a little bit of contrast. And I don't necessarily want to do the entire image, so I'm going to go ahead and flip this back the other way so the, the adjustment's been covered up. So to do that, we want a black mask instead of a white. So to invert it, we're going to do a Command-I for invert. And then basically paint in, in white to reveal what I just uh, the adjustment we just made. So we need to toggle back by hitting the X key. And then basically we can come in here and add a little contrast back in, add a little darkness. I'm going to dial that down. I'd like his face to be a little more shaded. Just to kind of darken him up a little bit in the center. I'm going to actually add a little bit more to his hair here. And that's kind of where I was wanting to be with it for the most part. Um, with his eyes, I want to see a little more highlight in his eyes. So I'm going to actually come back down to the background layer, which is what he is on now. And I'm going to go ahead and duplicate that just by doing a Command J. I'm going to go to my brush tool, make sure my brush is selected with white. And I'm just going to come in here and do a small highlight in white on both his eyes. Just to really brighten those eyes up a little. And I'd like to have a little bit larger highlight too. So I'm going to actually Pull that back down to about 30% ish, give or take a little bit. 
And I'm going to increase the brush size just a little bit. So it sort of creates a little more catch light in his eye. And just hit it a couple times just to kind of soften it up a little bit and also give it a, make it a little larger because I wanted his eyes to really pop out on that. So now that we have that done, what I would like to do is create some uh, rays of light coming from the window in the open door here. So I want to go ahead and flatten out the layers at this point, uh, just so we're working with one layer. I'm going to go ahead and duplicate it by doing a Command J. And then what I want to do here is actually go to Levels, uh, go up to Image, Adjustment, and then do Levels so it's actually doing it on the, on the image. And we're going to just basically take this uh, pretty dark and then we want, basically what I want to do is have these areas white and everything else black. So that's going to give me a pretty good start for this. Uh, what I'm going to do now is go in and paint in here and just blacken everything up that I don't want to have affected. And what I'm working on now is only the, the, the area where the rays of light are going to be coming from. Um, I'm not worrying about the image at this point. I actually have the image duplicated down here. So that's pretty good because I want the rays to be coming from this area and this area. So just go ahead and blacken that up all the way and that's pretty good. So now what we're going to do is go up to filters and go to blur and then motion blur. Uh, we have the the blur, basically the the light areas coming in from both sections, um, pretty much parallel with each other, but at a little bit of an angle. So I'm going to change the angle a little bit, and then click OK. And I want to increase that the rays. So I'm going to go ahead and come up here to filter again and hit motion blur. And I'm going to do it one more time. And that's going to kind of create rays of light. Actually, let's go ahead and do that one more time yet. So what that's going to do is create some rays of light coming from, from the image. So now what I'd like to do is increase the lightness just a little bit more. So I'm going to come back up to Image and Adjustments and then Brightness and Contrast. And we're just going to boost that up a little bit so there's a little more highlight coming there. And then basically we're going to change our blend mode on that layer to Light Color. And that's going to give us sort of a uh, more of a, a feeling of rays of light coming in there. Uh, I do want to get rid of some of this because this is going to make it look unnatural. So I'm going to go ahead and just put a mask on there and just paint that out. And we can kind of come in here and selectively paint some of it out on the image too because we don't want to cover him too much. And then basically that's it. We have rays of light coming in from both sides. If we want to, we can actually add a little Gaussian blur. Uh, so let's go ahead and do that just to kind of soften that up a little bit. And we can kind of see how that's, that's adjusting it a little bit more even yet. And then just come back in here. We're going to do a little more painting on the, on the image just to let that, get that off him a little bit more. And at this point, we have our image pretty much done. Um, we've created a, from the start to the end, we've changed the image completely. Um, what I like to do is crop this a little differently. I generally like to do, uh, I, I love crops that are off proportion size-wise. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and bring that, pr bring it down and do something real long and narrow. And we're going to give it a twist too. So that's kind of what I was looking for for the shot. Uh, just a little closer up, a uh, whole different effect uh, when you add the HDR effect with some of the lens blur. You can actually do some adjustments and change the blur uh, or the, the lens flare coming in. You can do radial blur or just add any type of uh, radial streaks you want with that. Uh, but other than that, it's a pretty simple effect and uh, works pretty well, I think. If you have any comments, please leave any comments for me if you have any questions, and I'd be happy to answer anything for you, and thanks for watching.